Hi, I'm Callum Rodia, and this is Subbury.com's Throwback Thursday. This is the Subbury Basin. It's basically the reason why we're all here, because if it wasn't for this massive impact crater, we wouldn't have the mining industry that gave rise to the city of Greater Sudbury as we know it today. Now our economy has diversified over the years, and mining is no longer the sole vocation that it once was. But if it wasn't for a meteorite 15 kilometers in diameter smashing into copper cliff back in the Paleo-Proterozoic era, we wouldn't have this critical industry that has shaped our city through boom and bust cycles for over 100 years. Now of course we don't have footage of this impact event because it happened 1.849 billion years ago. But with two of our city's most important employers, Valley and Glencore, reporting healthy profits last week, we asked the Greater Sudbury Archives to dig us up some old footage of the mining industry back in its earlier days. Take a look in this week's episode of Sudbury.com's Throwback Thursday, in which, this being the year of Canada's 150th anniversary, we celebrate a little bit of Greater Sudbury's history. During construction of the Canadian Pacific Railway in 1883, blasting and excavation revealed high concentrations of nickel-copper ore on the edge of the Sudbury Basin. Thomas Edison, inventor of the phonograph, the motion picture camera, and his greatest hit, the light bulb, visited an industrial exhibition in the Sudbury area in 1901. Edison thought nickel and cobalt deposits could be used in his production of electrical equipment and, when he returned as a mining prospector, was credited with the original discovery of the Falconbridge ore body. Edison's attempts to mine the ore body were unsuccessful, however, and he abandoned his mining claim in 1903. A street in Falconbridge, as well as the Edison Building, which served as the head office of Falconbridge and Extrata, and now the Greater Sudbury Archives, are named for Thomas Edison. Mining began to replace lumber as the primary industry as improvements to the area's transportation network made it possible for workers to live in one community and work in another. Two major mining companies were created. The International Nickel Company, better known as Inco, was established in 1902, and Falconbridge was established in 1928. They became two of the city's major employers, and two of the world's leading producers of nickel. Through the decades that followed, Sudbury's economy went through boom and bust cycles as world demand for nickel fluctuated. The city recovered from the Great Depression much more quickly than almost any other city in North America, due to increased demand for nickel in the 1930s. Sudbury was the fastest growing city and one of the wealthiest cities in Canada for most of that decade. Another economic slowdown affected the city in 1937, but the city's fortunes rose again during the Second World War. The Froude mine alone accounted for 40% of all the nickel used in Allied artillery production during the war. But, thanks to the open coke beds used to smelt the ore in the early to mid 20th century, the Sudbury Basin suffered a near total loss of vegetation and became blanketed with exposed rocky outcrops permanently stained black. The construction of the Inco Superstack in 1972 dispersed sulfuric acid over a much wider area, reducing the acidity of local precipitation and enabling the city to begin a massive regreening effort. In 1978, Inco workers went on strike over production and employment cutbacks, which lasted for nine months. The strike badly damaged Sudbury's economy and triggered the city government to aggressively diversify the local economy through the 1980s and 1990s. In 2006, both of the city's major mining companies were taken over by new owners. Inco was acquired by the Brazilian company CVRD, which itself was renamed Vale, while Falconbridge was purchased by the Swiss company Extrata, which itself was purchased by Anglo-Swiss Glencore. Well, there you have it. Now, of course, this little video just barely scratches the surface of the economic, environmental, and cultural impact the mining industry has had on our city. Today, mining might not be the beginning and the end of the conversation like it once was, but one thing is for sure. 
We never would have built a city of over 160,000 people inside a billion-year-old meteorite crater in northern Ontario without the metallic riches embedded in the landscape. Thank you to the Greater Sudbury Archives for supplying the footage and the photos that you just saw, and thank you for watching. For Sudbury.com, I'm Callum Rodia.